Hello and welcome to Islander Robotics. As always, I'm Will and today we're going to be starting the beginnings of image classification with TensorFlow's data set called Fashion Mint. Go find your favorite place to sit back, relax, with your favorite snack and let's get started. I absolutely love artificial intelligence, image classification, machine learning, I love all that stuff. But what I always think is hilarious is that people think with artificial intelligence and machine learning you can get right into the data set. You don't have to do anything else but start creating the model. The funny thing is, is that before you start programming the model and developing the model that's going to become your um, trained model, whether it be artificial intelligence with TensorFlow or with machine learning or machine learning with Python, you first have to start with the data preprocessing of the um, data set so that you understand how to visualize the data when it is done being trained. So today's video is going to be about how to pre-process <clears throat> the very nostalgic fashion mints of TensorFlow. All right. So starting off, the first thing we're going to have to do is import the two libraries we need, which of course is going to be TensorFlow as well as matplotlib.pipelot. And those two libraries are going to allow us to visualize the data for the next part after the data preprocessing. So, first thing, import as TF, and then import All right, so now that we have the two libraries that we're going to use. The next thing we have to do is assign our data set to a variable. So this is just fashion mints we're going to be using. It's going the variable is going to be fashion. And we're going to be pulling the data set from tf.curious.datasets.fashion mints. So as you'll see on the screen, This is just getting all that data from this library and assigning it to something that we can work with. The next thing we have to do is split this up into train, train, we have to split this up into four different variables. It's going to be X train, Y, um, X train, Y train, X test, and Y test. But in the case of this, um, in the case of this scenario, since we're going to be working with labels and images, I'm going to call them instead of X test, it's going to be train images, train labels, all right? And then the same thing with the test values. Test images, and then test labels, all right? Which is going to equal fashion dot load data all right so the next thing we also have to look at is the values we're going to look at the pixel values we're going to look at all the different dimensions of each one of the variables so print train images dot shape the dot shape is actually a built-in class of TensorFlow, I mean, of Python that allows you to see the different dimensions. So real quick, I'm gonna run this. You'll see there's 6,000 different images in train image, as well as each image is made up of 28 by 28 different pixels. And you'll see that same thing with the test images as well. You'll see a different length, but the pixel values will be exactly the same. Sorry, I said 6,000, I meant 60,000 images inside of the train image um, variable. And then each one of those 60,000 images broken up into 28 by 28 pixels, all right? So one picture for both the train image as well as the test image variable has, one of those images each has 28 by 28. 
but the length of the total array is going to be 60,000 for the train image as well as 10,000 for the test image. And we can also confirm that with just this simple command, length of train images. And I'm gonna print out the length of test images. And then run it again. All right, so give it a sec and then it should be giving us 60,000 and 10,000. So that's the total length of the array, which you can see now from the original example when I used the shape class for each one of those arrays. Now, if you go into train labels, it's made up of different, it's made up of mainly zero. Each, each array has a value of either zero to nine, all right? That is representing each one of the classes, all right? So as you can clearly see when you just simply type in print train labels. Now, so that we can understand, so right now the train labels is in essentially computer language. It's just numbers, zeros, it's a number from zero to nine. The way we're gonna get it so that us humans can understand it is we're just going to simply run, we're gonna have this, we're gonna have this variable, well this list inside of it, which is class names equals t-shirts, trousers, pullovers, dress, coat, sandals, such and such, all right? So if simple way to do it is going to be like this. Well, actually, I'll show you more exactly on why we have to do this in a sec. It'll make more sense when I get to that portion of the video. But the next thing we have to do on the data pre-processing section of Fashion Mints is we have to check the pixel values. We know that each image is 28 by 28 pixels, but how? what is the greatest value of those pixels, all right? So, we're going to use the PL we're going to use matplotlib for this example. So plt.figure Just do it like that and then plt. image show train images 0 because we're going to call we're going to call the very first image in that array. So plt image show and then plt dot color bar and then plt dot grid. We're going to set a value of false because we don't want to see the grid. And then plt dot show. This is also another very, when you're making a graph, when you're making a plot with matplotlib make sure at the end you always put plt.show because I have made that mistake and not had it and it doesn't pop up so right here we're going to see the very first image we're gonna see the image of the very first picture of um, train images alright and you're gonna see the value of each one of the pixels so you as you can see it goes from zero all the way up to a little bit past 250 it's not 260 but it's a little bit past so we're gonna say it's 255 now we're just using the first image. It is very easy to just say, okay, what about the other images? There's there's 60 different, there's 60,000 other images. Are they all zero to 255? Well, let's just run a simple one. We're gonna get rid of this. Do a for loop for i in range. We're gonna say 10. All right, we're gonna just look at the first 10 images. PLT dot am show train images i. PLT dot color bar. PLT dot grid false. PLT. And we're going to have it show each time this thing runs. So run it again and we'll see all we'll see the first 10 images, the pixel values of the first 10 images. So let that run and then alright. 
So we have the first 10. This one looks like a this one looks like a high heel. Same value as the first one. Which this one's the first one. Again. 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 And again, all these images, the highest pixel value is 255. So after we find the pixel value, we have to make sure that the class names line up properly with the train labels, all right? We have to make sure that the labels are matching so that essentially the computer labels match with the human labels, all right? So that both the computer and the human can understand what each one is saying. So plt.figure. And then fig size ten by ten and then for I in range of twenty five. We're going to make sure that this matches up with the first twenty five with the first twenty five images and so after that we're gonna we're not gonna have the last one we had 10 separate plots come up. This time we're going to have 25 plots set up on one plot. All right, so we're gonna have 25 subplots on one plot and that is just, we're gonna do that simply with plt.subplot five by five. So it's a, it doesn't mean five by five subplots, all right? So a total of 25. And then we're gonna put the value of each one of those subplots. So it's five by five and then each one's going to be I plus one. All right. Just make sure you add that, and then it's gonna be plt dot x ticks. Plt dot y ticks. And the next thing we're gonna have is the image show. All right. So it's gonna be same as before, but we're gonna add something at the end. I am show. I, comma. We're going to add CMAP, and CMAP is going to be what makes up, makes the images properly size up for the plot. All right, so CMAP equals PLT dot binary. No, PLT dot CM dot binary. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have X labels. So plt dot X label is going to be class names by train labels. L -A -B, which is going to be at the value of I. And then after that, it's going to be plt.i, plt.show. Run this, and we'll see if the values of the labels in the train images match up correctly with what we actually want those values to be in real life. So let me make this a little bit bigger. And. I would say that the class names match up correctly with the train labels. The first one we got is an ankle boot. I would call that an ankle boot. Then we got a dress over here, pullover right here, sandals, coat. Bottom line is, is that the labels correctly match up with the class name labeled. All right. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this video right here. Join me next time where I show you how to actually implement all the values I showed you. So why it is so important for us to find out the pixel values, that 255 value, and why it's so important for us to make sure that the labels match up with the class names. If you're not yet subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button with that bell, as well as that bell icon right next to it. As well as, if you learned something and you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button. It really does help support this channel so that I know that I am providing you guys with content that you all actually enjoy. Until next time, I'll see you. Bye.